now we are coming in to the ruins of God's ground zero. Jesus very center when he ministered uh, here on earth, public ministry for three and a half years. I'm walking right now uh, to take a look at uh, ancient, ancient ruins that are built around what the very early tradition identifies as Peter's house. So we're going to take a look at Peter's house. The whole house is not left, 2,000 years old, but uh, actually some of the stones inside, we believe, come from Peter's house. And not only Peter's house, but they actually found a room that seemed to be identified as a very special room. And that room is probably the room that Jesus stayed in when he was living in Peter's house. So you're seeing like buildings that are like concentric circles or octagons actually, that are, you know, several rings and they consist of the old, the further in you go, the, the further back in time you come. So the last octagon, the smallest octagon, furthest in, is an ancient, ancient, ancient church. And inside of that, you see a couple of stones, four of them actually, that are like built upon each other. That we believe, with the white plaster on it as well, that comes, those stones come with high probability, also archaeologists say that, from Peter's house, and not only Peter's house, but Jesus' room in Peter's house. I don't know what you think about that, but that gives me goosebumps. So you might be looking at the very stones that come from Jesus' room in Peter's house. Those four stones upon each other, the two top stones have white plaster on them. Imagine that that might have been Jesus' room. High probability, actually. Okay, we are going to read the text about this later on, but we're going to move on now, and we're going to go to the synagogue. So, uh, follow along. Uh, to the right, you have ruins from the village of Capernaum. We're walking, looking at the ruins of the village, fisherman's town, where Jesus ministered in awesome ways to thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Now we are coming to the uh, synagogue and uh, the white synagogue on top is uh, not from Jesus' day and age, even though it's pretty close, but the black foundation beneath the white building, if you see the black foundation, that is the synagogue from Jesus' time. So that is the foundation for the synagogue, to the synagogue, where Jesus ministered. And as you see, pilgrims from all over the world here. So many languages. So many people that are interested in Jesus and his life and the Bible. I think it's a wonderful, awesome thing. It really is. And as I said, the white ruins here are a synagogue that is a a little later, not really Jesus' day and age, but close, but the black foundation that you saw is from Jesus' time. Why don't we read a text? My, my choice is to read from the Gospel of Mark. Why is that? Why do I read from the Gospel of Mark? Well, early church tradition says that uh, uh, Mark, he recorded what Peter said. So this is Peter's eyewitness testimony. Mark knew Peter well, and he recorded what Peter said. Uh, and it's kind of interesting because you can, you can kind of get to know a little bit about Peter when you read his gospel. It's, the gospel of Mark could have had the name the gospel of Peter then. And uh, one word that Peter often uses uh, in the gospel is the word immediately. 
uh, fishing Greek. It comes time after time after time after time after time again in the Gospel of Mark. And it's like Peter's personality. It's like you can sense his passion and uh, excitement and amazement when he tells Mark about everything that happened. Immediately, immediately, immediately. He was like in a constant, constant shock. Positive one, but, but still, when, when Jesus started to call him and minister. And, and let's just read about when God came to town. Um, they went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. And please remember then, I repeat for the third time, this synagogue is, is not from Jesus' day and age, but you're sitting on the foundation that is from Jesus' synagogue. So you are at the very right, here we know that you're at exactly the right spot where this happened. And Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then a man in the synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching? And with authority? He even gives orders to impure spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. Uh, so, um, this is the thing that happened here. In the synagogue we were at the very right spot when we read it and uh, i just also want to read to you what happened in, in jesus in, in peter's house we saw the ruins from that house uh, just a couple of minutes ago let's just finish with reading a text from what happened in you know that house you saw ruins from just a couple of minutes ago as soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. And listen now, I love this. Listen to this testimony from Peter. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. And listen to verse 33. The whole town gathered at the door. The whole town gathered at the door. And Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons. But he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. So, you know, the whole town gathered at Peter's door. And, and you know, right after that comes that episode, that testimony. Perhaps you remember when they uh, broke up the roof of Peter's house. The roof to the garden that was, that was made of clay with some different materials. So it was pretty easy to break up. But it was, there was some work because of course the clay had been dried to kind of stick. <laughs> but but they, they broke up the roof. <laughs> you can just imagine, you know, getting your, getting your roof trashed. <laughs> and then they lower down that, that paralytic. The man who cannot move. And the first thing Jesus says to him amazes everyone when he says that I forgive you your sins. And everyone goes, Oh, who is he? Who is forgiving sins? Is he God? So they broke up the roof and they 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 lowered down the paralytic. And Jesus says, Your sins are forgiven. And after that, he says, as a sign that he has forgiven him his sins, he says, Stand up and walk. And the man stands up and walks. And the rumor about Jesus spreads all around the area. Please remember this was like a city by the border, by a big road, by a big route. The perfect place if you wanted your, your message to spread to thousands by thousands of people. Just imagine, isn't it a prayer that we can pray at the end of this program? A prayer. I think about my town, Gothenburg. There's lots of shootings, lots of criminality. Lots of wonderful things that uh, the body of Christ is doing as well. But 
we could sure need God to come to town, even, you know, stronger, clearer. We could need revival. But before we pray that prayer, perhaps we should just um, ask ourselves the question, am I ready for the town to come outside my own door? Am I ready to, to give up my roof? You know, not because God says, you have to give up your roof. It's, you know, it's more because if revival comes, it will be wonderful, but not comfortable. So uh, let's uh, not forget there was a price tag for Peter and Peter's family. I often think about Peter's family when he had to leave for, you know, long seasons. And James and John and Simon and uh, Matthew. There was a price tag, but you know what? It was a price tag that also included actually for them uh, dying as martyrs, except for John. But he was like a martyr all his life, being a prisoner at Patmos and all that. But uh, I think it was a price they gladly paid, gladly paid, because what they received was so, so extremely worth it. It's almost ridiculous, right? Being saved, being forgiven, having free access to heaven, and see God at work through your life. I mean, that. That's worth it a million times. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for being here where God came to town. Thank you for Capernaum. Thank you for your positive kingdom of God, ground zero, so to speak. Thank you that we have been able to see the home of Peter where Jesus lived and the, the, the grounds of the synagogue where, where Jesus, where you did all those awesome things. And, and we long, Jesus, for you to come to town. We pray for our own town. We pray for the body of Christ. All different churches and denominations, all people who want to be Christians, who are Christians. We pray, Lord, please come to town. Please turn up the volume knob. And Lord, uh, make us willing to, to suffer, to sacrifice uh, whatever we need to sacrifice when you come to town. But we pray to you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.